hello and welcome to another Arctic sea ice update. This is actually my second take. I made a fantastic first take where I explained everything and the nice thing about it was because I wanted to have some background music but I don't know how to m do that with a video. Uh, you dub it in later or whatever and uh, there was a funeral outside and they had this uh, here in the village in Austria where I live and they had this beautiful funeral music and it was so appropriate to the, the well, to Arctic sea ice in general and uh, but my microphone didn't pick it up so and I kept talking about the ice and and about the music when it stopped and it started again and yeah well so maybe I will try to put some background music with this video if I can find out quickly how to do it and otherwise it's just me and my boring voice explaining about the boring Arctic sea ice it's like watching paint dry on a wall people say well they don't know what they're talking about because it's very exciting and actually it's going to get really exciting in the coming few weeks and I just want to take you through that the update I wrote a lot this time way too much I hope somebody reads it but um, I try to explain what's going on and what's going to go on and uh, yeah first I thought we look at the concentration map for this year and we compare it to the other years. I usually I use this feature myself a lot on the Arctic sea ice graphs. You go to concentration maps and you click on a date. So in this case July 7th, then you scroll down and there you have it. You see this year it falls a bit out of the screen here. We have 2012, 2011. Of course the big difference is that there's no ice at all here. I mean, 2011, there wasn't any either there, and we're all we're getting there. There's still some le ice left here, some fast ice around uh, what's those islands called? I thought uh, Novaya Zemlya islands, and it's well, it's disappearing there. And uh, 2013 has been catching up, thanks to the melting here and also in Baffin Bay and Hudson Bay, and um, this uh, because. Oh yeah, the Beaufort Sea. Still a lot of ice, hardly any melting there. And you see 2012, 2011, 10, 7 and 8, even 9. Already had opened up quite a bit by then. And this year it's still closed. And it's the main reason that 2013 is behind so much. Because of the slow start to the melting season. And like I said, it has been catching up. And uh, yeah, if it really wants to catch up, it has to start melting here. And we're actually very surprised that it hasn't even opened up really yet. Because the ice is supposed to be very thin there this year. And there's hardly any multi-year ice flows, you know, keeping things together. And apparently the weather was so bad that, for melting that is, lots of clouds and everything, low temperatures that it still hasn't opened up and I think that is going to change in the coming two weeks because uh, I'll take you to the weather forecast it's of course the most interesting part of the update is what is going to happen in the next six to seven days so we go to the ECMWF forecast model on Wetterzentrale and we click Northern Hemisphere and click first day and here it is quite a big high pressure area it's already there but it's going to intensify and get bigger and it's going to get stuck for at least a couple of days and this really is the ideal setup for melting lots of ice uh, there's no clouds in here so the ice which still should be thin is going to get a real beating and we can see that in the next couple of days here you have it 1030 hectopascal it means very high pressure and yeah it just keeps going like that look at that it's this is really you don't see that a lot and when you do see it during the melting season it means melting time so yeah i mean, i'm personally expecting that the melting on the fringe fringes that made the trend lines on the graphs drop fast that that is almost finished all the easy ice is almost gone but it's i think it's going to continue at least in the chukchi because the ice looks really bad out there and uh yeah i think it's going to um make the ice retreat from the alaskan and canadian shore somewhat maybe a lot 
this will know in two weeks and maybe this period will stop after a week or so but if we look further down the road look it's still there but that's nine days out so there a lot of things can change in between but the first five days are pretty much fixed so we're going to have this high pressure area set up and yeah it's uh, there's still a lot of sun out there the solstice isn't so far behind us it's almost still 24 hour a day sunshine so yeah a lot of heat going in there and it's going to be very important i think for the remainder of the melting season because we had such a bad start that i wanted to show you there was this blog post i posted a couple of days ago and here you see uh, the previous big melting years and this year and all those years like for instance 2010 had that setup with that big big high and melted very fast in the beginning was leading on from almost all the graphs and 2012 you see it here it was in the uh, second or no it was in June the first part of June and that made um, the extent and area really crash and you see compared to this year here it was still okay the beginning of May but then we had a low pressure area taking over look how big it is here and uh, yeah that is the, the reason that this melting season is so far behind on the graphs but we're now going to get the first period of weather that is conducive to melt and compaction and maybe even some transport so uh, yeah we'll see wh what's going to happen it's uh, I, I, I don't think the record from last year is going to be broken but maybe and if it if it gets broken well everybody learns <laughs> everybody learns so uh, enjoy the Arctic sea ice it's uh, the only Arctic sea ice you've got